Hi, we're with the International Dyslexia Association Oregon Branch, and we are continuing our celebration of moms here in the month of May. We're going to be having Cara, who's on the board of the International Dyslexia Association Oregon Branch. She's going to be joining us. Uh, so excited to share her journey. Quick reminder, our Arts and Minds event is coming up here May 22nd. So you can check that out on our International Dyslexia Association Oregon Branch website. And again, Cara will be joining us here shortly. Uh, we're going to be sharing her story. She's a mom of three dyslexic children um, and a very amazing person. So just really excited to share her journey with you. Hey. Hey, I'm getting it set up here. No problem. That's all right. Uh, I think we need to flip uh, you. Do I need to flip it this way? There you go. Okay. Can you it. can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. All right, thanks. So, Kara, I was sharing a little bit about you being the mom of three dyslexic young yeah. people, uh, but. You're also a physical therapist, you're a Barton tutor, and you're on the board of the International Dyslexia Association, Oregon Branch. You just recently helped co put together the spring symposium, uh, all via Zoom. So my first question is, do you sleep or get any rest whatsoever? <laughs> I sleep a lot. <laughs> Good. I go to bed early and get up. I mean, early to me is like I go to bed around nine thirty or ten, and I get up early. Okay. <laughs> so, where does the journey of dyslexia start with you? Yeah. Um, well, it it started probably about ten years ago, um, maybe before that, but I didn't know. Um, my husband uh, was going to, he was going to George Fox to get his MBA. Oh, wow. And we were kind of in the midst of that. And he was starting to talk about just how his experience was. And um, school was a little bit hard in the sense that he had a lot of reading to do for class and a lot of writing. Um, he worked super hard and... Um, but it was sort of like hard that it shouldn't have have to been that hard. Um, so he actually went to the counseling center there and got tested just to see if there was something maybe that could help, you know, that he could get help from. For and sure. so um, that was a huge clue because they did say, oh, well, you're dyslexic. Now, we had no idea what that meant, but it was a big piece of the puzzle. And especially for him, who he had struggled in school, um, he, it was actually such a huge relief to him oh. to finally know that there was a reason that it was so hard for him. Um, so he'd just been persevering in the classroom because he's he's graduated, he's getting his master's, like. Yeah, and I have to tell you, he did great. I, I mean, he's a, he did great in, in college, and um, I, I mean, he just, he's a very bright person, and so that was kind of the beginning, but to be honest, um, you know, I was, I had done a little bit of, uh, tried to figure out what dyslexia was, and I was certainly thinking, okay, well, it's passed down, I knew that it was hereditary, but um, I didn't really see what the symptoms were until I started homeschooling my children. Um, so that was more of the bigger piece of how we got into it was really how it was affecting my kids. Okay, so I want to start. I want to start there. By the way, you have a lot of fans on this uh, uh, rooting for you as you're as you're sharing here, but. <laughs> <laughs> what what led to you deciding to homeschool your your kids? Well, 
<laughs> we have five kids and um quite honestly we had them at private school like we had our first three they're they're really close in age but they're two years apart in school and we just kept having more kids and we were like private school is getting pretty expensive and mm -hmm. so we decided that we were going to homeschool okay so they came back they came home and sort of we we just kind of jumped in with homeschooling I'm not a teacher, but we just were kind of, that felt more comfortable at the time for us. Yeah. I couldn't, didn't even know how I was going to drive them to school or get them to school. <laughs> I'm going to say five <laughs> schedules, managing five schedules. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, anyway, we started homeschooling and my third daughter, Caroline, she was the one who had m symptoms and the way we figured it out was, um, she was really tilting her head to read and she would kind of do this and my mom noticed and I noticed and a friend of mine said, oh, you should go to the optometrist and get checked and we did and then they suggested vision therapy. So we went, she has, she does have a vision issue uh -huh. um, and so we went to vision therapy, her eyes bounce and it's a congenital situation. Um, and we were there and I, you know, I've been homeschooling the year and her eyes are bouncing and we were doing the therapy, but it was like, she's still not reading great. There, there's like almost a whole nother piece of this. Can you check to see if she has dyslexia? And they did, they did some testing and sure enough, they, they said she did have mild dyslexia. Um, and that was enough for me to kind of go, okay, now we need to figure what this is, um, so, we need to so, figure it out. So you jump into action. Now you weren't a teacher, but now you're like becoming a teacher in, in that regard. Yeah. Was it even a thought to like, what is it like, to, what do I need to do to get trained? Like, or were you just, what, like at that moment, like, is that like, Oh, this is what needs to happen. I'm going to go for it. Or I, you know, I wasn't sure what to do, quite honestly. So, but I had a, I had somebody here in Newburgh, um, Priscilla, who I talked with and she was getting started. She'd been doing some tutoring and um, I just felt like the materials and the resources were put right in front of me and I just needed to go. And at the time, you know, we were getting private tutoring it was expensive. Sure. And I was like, I'm homeschooling my kids. I mean, this is maybe part of the reason why I'm even homeschooling, even though I didn't know it to begin with. Sure. Um, but I just felt like if I'm doing the homeschooling, I need to be able to um, continue, like pull from other subjects, what we were doing with reading. And I just felt like I needed to know it all. And so Oh, I just started doing the tutoring because the Barton program is the one that I started with. And um, it's just, it, it's made available for people like me who I'm a parent of a dyslexic and I can jump in without getting a whole lot of extra training. I could get the training as an individual. I, I want to pause you here because yeah. I, I, I get the fortune I'm fortunate to work with you on the board uh, of the International Dyslexia Association Oregon Branch, and I've gotten a feel for how you work. Uh, you're creative, you bring ideas to the table. I just wanna know from your standpoint, have you always been this way? Have like, I understand dyslexia hits close to home with your husband and your kids, so that, that's a different dynamic, but has it always been that way from like, from go for you to just like jump in and learn things and like, cause it feels like you bring that energy to the boardroom and I'm just wondering, is it consistent behavior from like, or like where did that start or how did that develop? God, I, I think I am a learner. Like on my, if you've ever taken a, you've probably taken a strengths finder, you know, okay. I'm a learner. That's one of my top five. So maybe that's part of it. Um, I live with many dyslexics. So we <laughs> think outside of the box regularly in my family. And so, you know, doing things differently is, is some benefits of 
having people with dyslexia in my life. And, and we are kind of do it yourselfers. So <laughs> I don't know, we kind of just jumped in and I don't know good or bad. It just, it just was the way it was for us. For sure. So, yeah. So then what was it? When did you find out about your because you have two more kids that are dyslexic as well. When did you find out about them and how did their, how did that, that evolve? Well, so as my daughter, we started tutoring. My youngest son has speech issues and he's had them since he was young. Okay. Uh, I mean, since he was one. Um, <laughs> um, I'm laughing because we used to pray that he would look, be able to talk. I mean, it was such a significant wow. issue for him and he's talking. <laughs> well, he's more extroverted than all of my family put together. <laughs> one small little package. So. Isn't it funny how that works out? Like the, 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 it's the slow, it's the slow involvement too. Yes. So, but the speech issues really, you know, I knew that right off. Um, he was in speech therapy for a long time. And um, so that was just part of the norm too. And as I had been learning more about dyslexia, I was pretty sure this was going to be a big piece of the puzzle for him. So I started him as early as I could. And, and he did the pre Barton program with lips and then Barton with me. And, and so it was, that was kind of our, our jump in with him. And then one of my other kids is just not as dyslexic, um, severity wise. And so, um, but I really didn't catch it because I had these two that were more severe that I, I just thought that was fine. Cause he was doing, it was a little reading and spelling were easier, but he was missing some things kind of regularly. So yeah. we did do Barton with him too. So. And and then for the two kids that are not dyslexic, did you end up doing Barton with them or did you, did they just. Did... I didn't. Um, okay. I, yeah, no, they were just doing well. And so at nice. that point, no, however, it's such a good solid program. I think it's, it, it warrants you could, cool. uh, but to be honest, tutoring three children regularly is a lot. I was going to say <laughs> like how the, I mean, from someone that's, I think as a, as a parent, there's some level of education or educator you would put with that title, but to be full time like that on a, in a career that you weren't expecting, what is the toll that that takes? Carl, oh, it is hard. I, I don't know that I can, it's hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't exactly know everything I was doing, but I just kept putting one foot in front of the next because I knew this was what my kids needed. Um, and homeschooling was kind of a new career too. That was, that's even more. And then we have five kids. I mean, we're just, <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of the younger years, it was just, it was just a blur, you know, I, but we I, did it. I was going to say, you could have filmed that. That's could have been a whole TV series. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's like the amazing dyslexia race. <laughs> <laughs> I would have watched. Uh, what, what advice would you have for parents that are figuring this out that may or may not be in a position to do what you did? Um, I think that would be a question that they would want to know is like, if I'm getting started and I find out my son or daughter or young person has dyslexia, like where, where do I begin? Um, well, n now I'm a consultant and dyslexia screener. And I would really recommend that if you have these symptoms or that you're noticing symptoms, um, in your family and these start young. I mean, you know, we would notice speech issues um, at age one and two. They're not talking um, by 12 months with, you know, five to six words. We're, we're going to think about it. If there's a hereditary impact, any family member, you know, we're going to think about this could be dyslexia. Um, let's just keep an eye out. Um, I would recommend getting screened. Um, I think one thing I love about the piece I get to do now is that 
families come not knowing. And when you know, you feel empowered to know what to do next. And in this arena, knowledge is power because now you know what you need. You know what your child um, needs in the classroom, as well as you are going to be aware of their giftings differently. And I think your child needs to know that. And I think they need to be spoken into and encouraged in that. But also you need to be a strong advocate for your child if they're in public school, private school, even homeschool. You're going to do things a little differently. And 